Now, the halting problem isn't the only undecidable problem. There's actually a very large number of undecidable problems, as we'll soon see. And the technique here is almost the same that we used for showing NP-completeness. So you remember that once we had shown SAT to be NP-complete, we could take a whole bunch of other problems, such as vertex cover, click, and independent set, and of course many more, and show these to be NP-complete using a reduction, because we were able to show that if you could solve vertex cover in polynomial time, then you could also solve SAT in polynomial time. And we'll now use a very similar technique. Now we know the halting problem is undecidable. We can look at other problems and show through a kind of reduction that if we could solve these problems here, then we would be able to solve the halting problem, which of course is not possible. Now the first problem we might be looking at is a generalized version of the halting problem. As you remember, the halting problem takes as input a program and an input on which to run that program. And what we could now ask is of course a more general question, and that is, does the program have any input on which it stops, or does it always go into an infinite loop? And we'll call that the generalized halting problem. So we're given p, and our question is, is there any input i for which p halts? And I'll show you now that this problem here is also undecidable, and then we'll look at other problems, and you can show that they are undecidable. So the proofs always work in a very similar fashion. You again start out with an assumption, and then lead that assumption to a contradiction. The initial assumption is that we had an algorithm, or a program, that can decide the generalized halting problem. So assume there's a program p prime that solves this problem here. Now how could we use this program here to solve the halting problem? Well, that's actually quite easy. So we have the program and the input, and now we construct a new program from that. That program is actually quite easy. We just make the input here part of the program code. So in a kind of pseudocode writing here, the first line of that program p double prime would be set the input variables to i, and that is now part of the program code of this program here. Here it was a separate input, and now it's part of the program code. So we set the input variables to the input, and then run p as always. And now it's clear that if we have a problem that solves the generalized halting problem, then we can just feed it this program here, because this program here actually ignores any input that we give to it. Finding out if that program over here will ever terminate is the same as asking, if the original program p will terminate on the input i. This program here cannot exist because if the generalized halting problem were decidable, this would also mean that the special halting problem here, where we are given an explicit input, would also be decidable. So we know that this problem is now undecidable as well.